Well, guys, it's another Friday, and it's um, it's been two weeks since my uh, my little dog died, and I've been feeling crappy. Just when I thought I, I really cried it all out. Last night I just exploded in tears, just before going to bed. It's it's very painful to lose her. I've had other dogs before, but. And I see them. I've seen them die, and, and I cry for them too. But this one was uh, very special. She would just sit next to me and put her her head on my knee and, and just kind of glare at me, look at me, and give me those loving eyes. And she would kind of softly, you know, close her eyes, and I would kind of pat her behind the ear and on the head. And she looked at me so sweetly. She was in love with me. I was, I was like a god to her. So, it hurt me a lot to lose her. I'm trying to get over, get over it, but it's not easy. It happened too sudden. Didn't see it coming. Just didn't see it coming. So just to keep my mind busy, um, I just finished the the bar project. Um, it's just an idea that it occurred to me. And uh, I think I showed, uh, no, I haven't showed yet. I, I took a video when I was uh, giving it the gloss. I just bought a, a, a butcher block and, and, and you know, gave it a la the, the glaze. Got a nice maca noodle here. Now this guy shows up. Jesus Christ. Let me turn that off for a while. <laughs> Let me show you the uh, the little project that I did. That's a little bar. It's not a bar. It's a uh, it's a cooler for you can put the beer and, and stuff. And I put this little rubber seal there so it could uh, have a better cooling. And then I said, uh, usually we put the bottles up here. And, and uh, but this is where we put also the food, barbecue stuff. And I said, you know, it, it's gonna be kind of crowded. So I came up with this. Let me put this here. Burning myself. It's a uh, it's a little shelf on the side that swings up, so you can put the bottles and the lemon, the little block to cut the uh, lemon. Then you bring this up. There it is. Hey, Baba. That thing came up pretty nice. And then people can come here and serve their, their own drinks and get the ice uh, for the drink, get a beer or get some water, bottled water. And then this is the opener for the beer. Something. Hey, Martin. Hey, Papa. 
Um, oh. That's a character. So gorgeous. Oh. He likes to rub his face on my knee. So, yeah, I did that and I had to keep busy, keep my mind busy because I was very emotional with the death of my little brother. So, when we do a barbecue, that's, that's going to be uh, ready, ready to go. And I still got a lot more to do around here. One thing at a time. Um, the um, I, t I talked to Mr. Wonderful, and I said, "Hey," uh, he says, "No, you can come down. He's got a big yard." I said, "You can come down with your crossbow and the target, and we can shoot and stuff." And I said, "Hey, uh, if." If I take the crossbow there and, uh, and you like it, you want to buy it so I can buy the other one. It's a little shorter. He goes, no. <laughs> I said, okay. So I'm stuck with it. It's a it's a good crossbow, but it's a little on the heavy side and a little big. It should be four or six inches shorter. They're making them this, you know, like 20 inches, 24 inches. Very short. 26, about 26 inches. Uh, this one is 33, I think. So uh, that's that. Uh, tomorrow I'm planning on going to the boat. I had the carburetor sitting in the trunk of the car for three weeks now. I just didn't have the death of my puppy. Uh, it just took the the wind out of my sails. I just didn't feel like doing going over there. I feel uh, feel pretty crappy, but you gotta keep going. Nothing you can do. Life is life. And uh, see if I can install the carburetor, and then I gotta move the the chair that uh, belongs to the blazer to the blazer install it because I, I did some work on the carpet I had to stretch it and stuff and now for some reason I can't find the bolts to bolt down the the rear seat so I'm gonna have to go to King's uh, King Bolt and see if I can find some I think it's probably five eighths um, I don't know. I don't know where I put it. I have a table with all the stuff from the blazer. It's not there. So I got to do that and make some room because then the next thing to do is to buy the plywood for the, uh, to make a cabinet for the boat. I got to buy some extra paint, oil paint, and paint it, install it. Uh, I can probably do the whole thing in one day if I set my mind to it uh, And then get ready for the fishing uh, season the fishing season already open the rockfish People are getting some rockfish. Uh, I Don't need the cabinet for that So I can I can probably take people out uh, If anything if the carburetor is working and the pump is working everything run those engines and put some more gas and then I can probably take people out um, next weekend uh, the following weekend so I could uh, get out there uh, it's a pretty nice day now tomorrow's gonna be 81 it's gonna be as warm as today down at the beach and then I can install that um, I've been looking at some of my videos and I'm still kicking around the idea about the uh, the tree stand I, I wish somebody can come with me because 
<clears throat> if something happens to me climbing on that thing, um, I need somebody to be stand, standing by with a radio and say, hey, I'm hanging on the street. <coughs> Come and help me. I don't know how. Once you get up there, I, I, uh, I'm I still kicking it around. So the, the reason to look at the video is that I'm looking at the trees in those videos. And there's some areas where it's pretty promising. It's got a very good view, very long view. Take a long shot. And the perfect rifle for that, I only got two rifles for that, is the, the 7 mag and the 270. Um, you know, ballistically, uh, I gotta check the 30 at 6. The 30 at 6 is pretty, I'm not gonna say it's flat as the 270, but it gets out there. It's like it, you can shoot pretty far. I got a friend that he killed an antelope with a 30 at 6. He shot it standing up. That was, and he shot at roughly. 400 yards a little bit over maybe 440 and he, sh he killed it one shot 30 at six is a good it's a good bullet it's 30 caliber 150 155 grain whatever and he did kill the the animal the, the animal was a small game it's you know and it dropped right there there's a lot of energy in a 30 at six but it kicks uh my two, my uh, seven mag kicks less, believe it or not, than the thirty at six. And the reason why is that it's magnaported in the front, and it's semi-auto, so you don't get that complete punch, you know, the kick in your shoulder. It it kind of it kind of spreads out the kick between the 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 energy between the magnaporting and the automatic when it opens to eject the cut the uh, shell. And I'm thinking that. I will probably take, but I have a range finder. I have a range, uh, a BDC bullet drop compensator on my 270. I can take the 270 with 140 grain. That'll do the job. Oh, get my lighter. Oh, This is a Macanudo handmade, imported with a gold uh, shield, and it's pretty smooth. Pretty smooth. I usually go by the color of the cigar. When you're gonna buy it online, I look at the color. If it's a little light, I don't buy it because it's kind of weak taste flavor this is a very good smelling cigar so <clears throat> I'm waiting for the snows to melt I just text a friend of mine let me see if he answered I asked him what's the status on the snow he's got cameras up in the cabin says <laughs> still lots of it it's still lots of it let me give you a <laughs> it's buried the vehicle is buried okay that's a van that i didn't know he owns the top of the cabin it it's it's pretty snowy so he goes up there with a snowmobile he's probably the only one that can make it up there and uh so i'm waiting for the snows to melt because i want to see i want to go in person I'm gonna take a trip and, and be up there for, I don't know, two days maybe, and see, uh, uh, scan that area where I'm planning on putting the stand, see if I could walk it, because there's the, the manzanilla brush and the bitter brush. The bitter brush is the one that has those thorns. And uh, I wanna see if I can walk through it because I'm gonna be carrying a gun, a backpack, the the uh, tree stand and see if I can <laughs> I'm not gonna kill myself going down that the, 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 the side of the mountain 
to find a tree that I can install the tree stand and sit up there with the rifle. I'm not using the crossbow for that. It's not crossbow or bow friendly. The shots are distant. The, the, the cover is very open. It's rifle country. Uh, the other spot where I think that's good for the bow or the crossbow, uh, I'll check that one too. Because that's the area that I found uh, two beddings. And, you know, I'm hoping that the deer are still using those beddings. So, I'm, I'm thinking about, I, I'm not going to buy it yet until like see, you know, I said, okay, it's feasible. I could do it. And then I'm going to see if I can dig up one of my uh, old hunting buddies to see if they want to come along. And uh, they can hunt different direction. But I need a little bit of a safety net, just in case. Another thing is that if I do catch a deer, I'm going to have to go up and down that mountain with all the gear and the deer and rifle. And, you know. uh, <clears throat> so, we'll see. It's still up in the air. And I still want to do another backpack. I know I made a video titled My Last Backpack, backpack Hunt. Man, I love that area. I just love it. I, I want to go there with my backpack, go in, and, you know, I, I wish that Mr. Woods, MT, I think it's meant MT Woods, uh, from Montana, I wish he lived closer. He's about my age, he likes hiking, he likes hunting. And I wish he could come along, but he's very far away. I could I could probably drive drive around with the quad, but what are the chances of seeing a deer while driving a quad in California? This is not the Midwest that you you drive around. And you see the deer feeding on the you know on the wheat and the corn and, the, and you know those feed plots and food plots. Not here. I can still drive around and, you know, enjoy that. But I wish I could take somebody else with me. It, it's, uh, it helps all the way around. It, it, hunting is just not about carrying a gun and shooting at everything you see. That's what some non-hunters think, that you're walking in and you see a, a lizard and you shoot it, that's not the way hunting is. If you're hunting for a certain game, that's the game you're after. You're not gonna shoot at a rabbit or a coyote. Or... You're looking for deer. If you start shooting at everything that moves, you're spooking the deer. So you're not gonna catch a deer. So you keep quiet, you look for deer. You're not shooting at anything else. And every animal has its place, has, has an area. So if you're gonna go for rabbits, you're not gonna go where the hunt for the deer are. There are other places for hunting it, desert, that kind of thing, low roll, uh, rolling hill. So what I what I taught him was um, how to walk in the forest, and that's very important. I took a guy one time that he kind of he thinks he's a know it all, and he was dragging his feet, and I said, "Hey, um, you're making noise, you know, going over." gravel and stones and so you're making noise pick up your feet and don't step on any branch or anything that can make noise go slow and easy well on the way down he kept dragging his feet and then guess what happened he tripped on a rock landed on his face almost broke the scope on the rifle and i just gave him a look like i told you so he was walking right next to me. So we were basically walking on the same terrain. And he he's a tall guy. He landed on his face. God, plonk. I said, man, you're going to kill yourself. 
And I do that because I go by myself. When you go by yourself, you got to be careful what you're stepping on. You got to be careful how you walk. So I, I'm always picking up my feet and, and looking at where I'm going to put my foot, where you're going to land. Sometimes you're surrounded by pine cones. You got to find a way around it because pine cones are very noisy, especially if you're hunting in oak uh, areas. Leaves all kinds of shell on the floor, and then the shell makes a lot of noise. It's like walking on, on, on eggshells, you know. So you gotta. Sometimes I'm walking, all of a sudden, boom! There's a field of crap in front of me. I go, okay, I can't go through it. Go around. Another thing is you walk in the shadows. Never walk into the sun. So plan ahead. Look at, look ahead in front and see which is the way to go. Say, okay, I'm gonna follow that line of trees. I'm gonna be on this side where the shade is and, and, and try to step on pine needles instead of the, the noisy stuff. Another thing is I taught them not to step or walk on a, on a deer trail. So if you find a deer trail, try to walk, straight your leg and, and step over it or, or jump. But if you jump early in the morning, you're gonna make that noise when you land. So you gotta stretch up, but never because the, the deer's walking and smelling the ground. If he smells your boots or your or your scent, if your boots are not sprayed, they're gonna smell it. So things like that, I taught them how to uh, how to go stealthy and. Uh, um, you know how to hunt the, the deer is the last thing then uh, I taught them to how to look through the binoculars uh, deer is not going to be standing in the open so sometimes you find them in the open very rare but look at the shadows look behind the tree line he might be 10 feet behind because the, the deer have a habit of eating right on the edge and they step out very when they munch munch and then they go back in to cover like that so you look at those areas take your time look at every tree one time i went up to um I think king city up in there and there was a deer uh, laying next to a a trunk tree trunk and we didn't know that he was there. We were plinking, you know, uh, with a 22. We weren't really deer hunting. I don't think we were deer hunting. I remember that. But we stopped to take a break and we took out the 22s and we started plinking. <laughs> that deer got up when he heard the noise. We were shooting in that area. I don't know if we shot at the tree trunk, but he got up and he kind of looked around. What's that noise? And he just bolted. So, you never know what's in front of you until you take a real close look, take your time, pay attention to what you're looking. Don't just look, just pay attention to what you're looking. Uh, sometimes you can see tracks on sandy areas and you can see the tracks if they're coming or going. If you're at a good angle, if you're looking from up, up down, above, um, and things like that. Look for any little body of water, streams, things like that. So I taught him, I taught him that here, but he was, he was paying attention to me. And, uh, I was very pleased. He wasn't cocky like the other guy. He, he listened to what I said and he, he practiced. Uh, and he, he did it good. He did good. We split up. He found a spot between two big boulders to kill his silhouette. And he's between those big, you know, looking that's another thing you gotta find cover for you when you're glassy don't just stand there because you're sticking up deer can see you from far away so just kind of get behind something to take your time in glass full camouflage um, so have some sort of a face cover because your face when it hits the sun and with the oils over your face, it'll kind of shine up a little bit. Just doing this facial, this head movement, 
it, it trigger it could trigger a deer if he's looking this way and he can't he can spot you yet but you do this movement like this real quick movement and he sees the movement boom you you bust it so bring up your I have a collar a camouflage collar bring it up to leave the eyes out you got your beanie out to here so you only have this much exposed and you look through the binoculars if you have a spotting scope the same thing you sit somewhere try to sit be between two brushes and you have this area to look kind of blend in with the foliage in the area uh, I have a t-shirt that is a sagebrush I got I got clothing for just about well, I'm not gonna say every type, but I got I got a few pieces of clothing that it matches, it blends with the surroundings. So if you if you hunting in a um, sagebrush area, I have a t-shirt, a long long sleeve t-shirt for that. You sit there between the sage, you disappear. So. He has he had pretty good camouflage too, and um, <clears throat> so he learned. So I'm gonna give him a call see if he wants to make it this year. I gotta give him a, a, a call way before the season. He might have all the plans, so we can apply uh, together and pull the tag. If I can apply for the wilderness area, I'm dying to go there. That's the place for me. I had the opportunity to see deer and decide if I want to shoot it or not. If it's a little buck, pass, let it pass. Uh, one time I went and I, I, I backpacked in and I, I picked a different area uh, to camp because I had a, uh, my hip was hurting from a fall I had here. I got tangled up with the hose and wham, I hit the cement. So I couldn't really go as far. And I went to a different spot. I picked an area and put my tent. And this is on a Friday. And I said, let me, let me get out a little bit and take a look. I left my gun behind because opening was on Saturday. So I, I don't poach. Never have. And, uh, I stand behind this little, I don't know, seven foot, six foot uh, pine tree. And I'm on full camo and I'm glassing and I'm glassing and I see movement. Oh my God. Four bucks. Three of those. And I'm going, are you kidding me? So there was a doe, a doe, it's coming this way, with a buck behind it was a big buddy. I mean, big buddy buck, four-pointer. The doe pay more attention than the bucks, believe it or not. The, the buck is kind of <laughs> sniffing her behind kind of thing. And the doe immediately spotted me. She just went, you know, ears popped. And the buck then noticed that she stopped. She's looking in a certain direction. So he started looking around. And I froze. I didn't move. And he kept looking and looking and looking. I said, man... These binoculars are heavy. Look away already so I can bring them down. And then they finally moved and they went the other way. And he kind of trotted. The other bucks, uh, two of them uh, went this way with the doe. The other bucks, the other two bucks, they're a little smaller. They were also four point. And they were looking in the same, but, but they were further. They were 100, and, I, I, I ranged it, it was 167 yards away. The one that spotted me with the doe was um, 80, 80 yards. They were looking in my direction from 167, and they couldn't really guess what it was because I froze. I became part of the tree. And, uh, you know, they give you the little old clear sign with the tail. They just go wiggling, wiggling, you know. It means that everything is fine. And they 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 walked maybe 20 yards and they sat 
they lay down under this little tree. And I said, oh, so this is where they're going to rest for the night. And I'm going, Jesus, I'm pretty close. Okay, let me back out of here. Really slow, backed out. Went down the, I was on a, behind a little hill. And I went behind there. Didn't make any noise. And I would just... And I made a video about it. I think, I, yeah, it's up, it's up on YouTube. And I said, okay, the deer's right over the hills, right over there. So I was thinking by tomorrow, they'll be getting up. Well, they were just resting for the afternoon. Could this happen around four, maybe five o'clock? And and usually that's when they kind of bed down. You know, they. they oh, the next day, thinking that they were going to be hanging around that area. I got up and I took my rifle and I said, okay, I'm gonna set up right here. When the sun comes up, they'll be there and I can take a shot, whichever I like. They were gone. So since I had a hurt pain in the hip, because I went to my my uh, orthopedic doctor and he took an x-ray, he goes, no, you didn't crack anything, but you hurt this muscle. He gave me the name of some weird muscle. It's really tender. He goes. You'll, you'll be uncomfortable for a couple of weeks and then it'll go away, okay? And that only happened like three days before the hunting season. So I was I was still hurting. I didn't walk any further. I just stay on top of the hill, kind of blend in with the surroundings. And there's a trail that cuts in front of me. And, well, no, there's no trail there. It was just with the deer where they... And it goes down into into these two little little tight little valley little thing you know little draw. <clears throat> Some guys walked past me, never saw me. They, they had their their red uh, their orange vest on. And I was looking at them. And then they went in that area, and within ten minutes, bang bang they got two deers they, they were probably the same two deers that they were laying there so those areas I know that where the deer like to do where they go more or less about the time they move and they do their thing so if I get attacked for that area and I have a buddy coming with me we're packing in we're packing in because then I'll have more reassurance that if I do get a deer, I can bring it out with the help of a friend. Sometimes I go hunting and, and I said, you know, do I really want to kill a deer that I won't be able to take out? Because I'm not going to shoot him for nothing to waste. No, I'm, I'm not that kind of person. I, I want to, you know, if it's easy, if I see that it's easy to get out and stuff, yeah. But if it's gonna kill me, if 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 it's gonna destroy my my hip, <laughs> I say you know, not big enough. But sometimes you don't want to shoot the biggest one because you can't carry it. So yeah, those are the things that that uh, that I think about when I go myself. Uh, <clears throat> so I I know that mountain. I know that mountain pretty well, <clears throat> and I know where the deer. I even found beds, uh, a lot, uh, lots of beds, maybe five together. That's kind of unusual. Um, and it's a, it's a very quiet area because there's a lot of pine needles on the floor, and they're soft. They don't crack. They don't make noise. So, yeah, man, I want to do another backpacking if I can. I just need a backup. can't take my wife because she won't be able to handle it either <laughs> and I bought her a brand new backpack and it's, it's been sitting there for I don't know, seven years I think or more so that's the way it is <clears throat> alright guys I'm gonna let you go I think I talked enough I just want to say one last thing about my dog. It, it gave me a lot, a lot of pain. 
I'm not hurt because I care so much about her. She was like a little angel. A little angel. And uh, my lady says she doesn't want any more because she doesn't want to hurt. You know, she had a heart attack, surgery. She can't go through that pain. And she's trying to hold it back. And she's afraid to let go because something could happen. And I said, no. And she keeps telling me, let it go, let it go. But I can't. I, I need time to get out of my system. So. All right, guys. I'll see you on the next one.